It's just spinning. Hello. All right. So hopefully the internet is functional this morning. It apparently the internet has a Fourth of July uh, hangover. Everybody's so tired from fireworks and being up late. But we are excited this morning. We did Waste Not Wednesday. We go live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. We take junk and we transform it. Um, today I'm taking a lamp that I think Caitlin actually brought over to us. Yes. I don't even know how long ago. It's, it's been a hot minute. That's actually just it's design. Dust. No, that's not dust. That's all oh, okay. time. Um, and we're going to refinish this lamp, which in and of itself will be pretty cool. But I'm excited about the lampshade because I um, have seen many people stenciled lampshades, but I personally, I don't think we've done it. Um, are you sure we've not? I'm sure we've stenciled. Maybe, but have we recovered it and stenciled No, it? we've never recovered and stenciled. We've just stenciled on what's there. So Zeb has a plan to recover the lampshade. He's going to take off the existing shade and use it as a template for the grain sack fabric, which we carry on our website at jamierayvintage.com, along with the paint and products that we're going to use. Um, and then we're going to use our horse grain stack. I think it's the 1902 one. And I even got the vine stencil in case Zeb wanted to do like some laurel wreath situation. Oh, you know, you're getting so, real ambitious. Yeah, there's going to be ruffles. It's going to be cool. But I'm going to go ahead and while he's taking that apart, I'm going to get my base layer on this. Would you mind passing me the crockery? Did I grab the crockery? Or is it still? Um, you got me gray skies here. Shoot, let me see if. I, it might still be in the ranger from when we went to the well, shop. Well, it's just right outside if it is. Yeah, so, I just want to see So the internet it. has been on and off here. They're doing some construction down the road. So we're going to do our best to work through the technical difficulties. We had trouble getting the live stream started. So hopefully it stays up and it stays going. And, you know, it'll be what it is. Sometimes you just, you have things out of your control that you just got to roll with the punches. Caitlin says she's excited because she gets asked how to cover lampshades frequently. I didn't oh. know that. Maybe she told me. I might have knew it at one point and it might have gone off the conveyor belt, but that's fun. It's, you know, what, what happens is I get inspired or Zeb gets inspired and we text each other. And this morning we literally had to scroll through random cryptic texts that we send each other so we don't forget stuff to find the idea. Oh, I, okay. I would. Were you not going to do the inside? No, I'm going to take the liner out. I think it only needs one. Oh, okay. I'd leave the liner. It had like a weird, like, like tear scratch thing inside. Oh, okay. You I didn't, wanna, I if, didn't love it, so I'm getting rid of it. If the liner's in good shape, leave it in because it will help your lamp light uh, work the Dif way it should. Diffuse it. Diffuse the lamp appropriately. So this actually isn't bad in and of itself. It's got some scuffs on it. It's not real wood. It's resin. So I'm going to be using cottage color in crockery. And then we're going to get milk paint out because milk paint is on sale 25% off. It's a flash sale. We didn't know it was happening. It's like a 4th of July special till yeah. Friday. Our manufacturer <laughs> let us know like Monday that it was going to be on sale. And so... So we were doing color of the month. This is all... All the milk paint's on all sale. All the milk paint. And it ends Friday, um, July 7th at 10 p.m. Mountain Time. So we're going to be using milk paint today because I always like to use... If a product is on sale, man, you got to use it. So this... I feel like I maybe need to downy dunk my brushes. Did we not wash that one good last time around? I don't know. So I'm just picking off this glue. I'm about done with that. It's not critical. Oh, I forgot. I was going to, can you pass me that tape? I'm going to yeah. tape off the cord a little bit. Oh, I did want to show you real quick this topper. Oh, careful. It's got like lots of paint that needs to be smoothed. I'm not moving it. Oh, okay. This topper was not like this when we got it, and it was so bad it didn't match. I don't even know the rest of the lamp. It might not have even come with that lamp. It might have just someone grabbed it at some point. So this is. Let's see if you can see this. Let's see if we can focus on the phone. Okay, so that's the topper it had, like a geometric. I don't even know what to call that shape. <laughs> anyway, I took it, chucked it up in the vise. And made this much this better. morning. It so, is handy when you can turn wood. So, you know, if you don't have this ability, sometimes just a simple knob on the top would be better than that. It doesn't just doesn't match that that lamp at all. That square. When you use milk paint, you have to have a layer under it. No, nope. I just wanted to. OK, 
Yeah, I got to get going with my project, or I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm going to get this whole thing. Painted. I'm going to be a full hour. I could just stenciled. do crockery with dark wax, and that would be cute, and like coordinate with the grain sack fabric. We're going to show you the fabric here. In a second. You're going to ruffle around the top edges of this, so like, mm -hmm. if I can't magically get this to go back on here easy. Yeah. Did you save the the edges like I asked you to? Save the edges. There's like liner in the edges that you remember I was pulling them off before, and you told me to wait. Oh, yeah, no. they're they're around here somewhere. I might have wadded them up and oh. okay and thrown them away who knows they i just peeled them off they're around here okay i could have thrown them away let me look i'm like i i was going to take it off and be gentle with it and you told me you would you would take care of that on the live video i have one oh, the other one fell down i did throw one away and then here you go now we have the lengths okay. on those two this is gonna be good <laughs> fine we're throwing away parts that are we need anyways yes i am gonna ruffle that i love me a ruffle all right, green. I think I got the idea for ruffling from Les, maybe, or was it Jane Brown? I don't, can't remember. But I do love using the grain sack edging to put ruffles. It covers a lot of situations that may occur when you are covering something. So this grain sack fabric that we carry is sixteen ninety five a yard. Um, we pretty much just sell it in the yard. Yeah, we only sell it in the yard. We don't do half yards. Nope. Because the website does not do that kind of increments. But we have shown you enough projects that you should be able to use an entire yard of fabric. Oh. We have done banners. We have done pockets. We have done pillows. We have recovered seats. Like you save every scrap of grain sacks. Occasionally when I have leftover fabric, I will like sell smaller portions of it. And I've, I just put that like in the thrift haul collection when I get it. Oh, you know what? I know where some scissors. Oh, you have scissors right here. I already got your scissors. Okay. Let me Try see. to be on top of it so that I don't get the, how come you guys aren't prepared for your live video? No, yeah, we get that anyway. And we <laughs> never are. I was prepared. Maybe not mentally. So the question is, do we want this stripe running vertically up it or around it? Um, I would go up it because I think it's going to be very tricky to get even around it. Okay. But good luck. May the force be with you. Okay. See. That's why I brought the whole bolt. Caitlin, would you mind taking out um, a yard of fabric? I feel like that'll be safe. Yeah, we're gonna we're not gonna use a yard. I but... think it's the three blue stripe is the one that we have. Thank you, Caitlin. She says she got us. But I was like, I'm bringing the whole bolt in case we screw up because occasionally, occasionally that happens. <laughs> Like, it would be better if we practiced this before we went live. Yeah, we've never that. done this before. We just had the idea, so we're going to try it. We're like, we think in our mind that it works, so it should work in real life. That right, happens with that. most of our projects, to be honest. Um, I mean, that I feel like it gives people a real life. This is how somebody who hasn't actually done this would do it. I feel like it gives people confidence. Like, if well, Jamie and Zeb can do it, then it can be done. There are some people that are just like wicked skilled at certain things and you know they've done it a million times and you're like, well, that's why it's easy for them. And there are certain things I do that I have done a million times. I was going to say, like, we've done plenty of uh, your basic DIYs that we, we've got a... We're adequate DIYers. Yeah, we've got a toolbox of skills that, you know, we can, we can kind of rely on that a little I bit. I think our biggest skill is we probably have more confidence than we should. Oh. <laughs> like we're like yeah we, we see a that. project and we're like yeah we could we could do that five days later still doing that same project and it's not right <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness i like to try new things though like it was fun um if you guys haven't subscribed to the jamie and zeb channel and you're interested in what we do outside of thrift flipping um definitely check it out because it's like a whole other world <laughs> it's a whole it's a whole other bag of tricks that we got going on here um we recently did some excavating and I learned how to use the tractor and uh, yeah I actually did use the tractor for a few things it's actually not as hard as it looks uh -huh. and I don't know if he's put it in a video but I also have learned how to use the riding lawnmower which is fun I've discovered that if I yeah, can use the tractor video. since we only have one then Zeb can do the groundwork otherwise I'm the one doing the groundwork so I was like I could, I could use the tractor I could do this the trick on this is going to be getting this to I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pin it. I, I was know. just gonna stencil it and then roll. What, just no, don't do that. Just stencil it in the middle and then lay the fabric out and cut it. Okay, I like that. I like that idea a lot better. That's 
that seems to me i'm not promising anything I'm just in my mind Look that you works. using that big brain you got is this from the regular fabric listing uh regular fabric listing so <laughs> i tried to drop the link and the internet was doing weird things and timed out on me and canceled the stream twice so the link may or may not be in the description. <laughs> Caitlin's got you though. She'll right. she'll get you all the. If you need you to need. send a picture, Patricia, email info at jamierayvintage.com. You can try DMing me on Facebook, but I'm not gonna lie. Since my Facebook got hacked, I have like 52 Facebook pages now, and I'm not real good at monitoring. So email is good because it goes to Caitlin, and she is good at that. All right, I have a whole bag of these. I just want to show you. Like, there will be many more uh, lampshade projects. I, we have been hauling this bag around for what, like two years? Somebody left it on a back porch when we started getting back porch offerings at the last shop when COVID shut the world down. I think this came. Anyways, it was nice because I just picked the shade that fit best with this lamp. Oh, that needs stirred. Okay, I'm going to heat gun this real quick, and then we're going to get our next layer on, which is going to be milk paint. Um, it's The email, Patricia, is info at jamierayvintage.com. Make sure to spell Jamie, J-A-M-I-R-A-Y. Or if you go to jamierayvintage.com, the email is on the bottom of our homepage. So are you, you've been painting that. Are you doing any other finishes on there? Are you going to dark wax? You got the dark wax out, looks like. Um, I'm going to use zinc milk paint. Oh, you're milk painting over that And too. then maybe I'm going to use clear wax and dark wax. I haven't decided. Connie, Connie says, once you get started with a lampshade reno, you won't stop. I have one in every room of her house. So if you guys watched our thrifting video from yesterday, I, or Monday, I thrifted the coolest vintage brass lamp and have decided to keep it at our house because I for sure want to put it in the cottage and I, I don't want to put it. But if she takes it to the shop, inevitably it will sell. Yeah. And I don't I mean, have anywhere else to put it. Someone on, was it Friday? Was buying up all of the, no, it's Saturday. Yeah, it was Buying Robin. up all of the uh, unbuyable uh, floral, floral <laughs> that didn't have a price or anything and Luckily, Caitlin was available while we were out of cell service, and Caitlin was like, okay, this is the price, and we, yeah, we sold it. It was fine. If I put in the storage lot. I actually have decided those projects we did last week. Um, I was going to do them just for the cottage, but I am going to put them in the shop, and if they sell, I'll just buy something else because I don't want to store them for five million years. Now, the brass those lamp that projects? I bought on Monday. The stool projects? Yeah, those. Okay. Fine. Right. They still make that stool at Ikea. I can make another one. All right. So I have what I'm doing here is I've got gray skies in the cottage color. It's got a built-in sealer in it, and it's a nice dark gray. But I'm also going to add like a dip of weathered wood from the DIY paint. Not so much that it doesn't have the self-sealing properties. I'm basically using it as a dye. And I just dipped the tip of my brush. And now I'm going to mix that in just to darken up the gray skies a little bit. It's not going to change it a whole ton, but just enough to kind of give it a little more contrast. And I wanted a little bit darker shade than just gray. I'm just making sure this is all the way dry because I want layers not blending. And you got to be so careful if you're using a heat gun on cottage color because it has a built-in sealer. So it will um, bubble if you leave it in the spot for too long. But the built-in sealer makes it perfect, perfect for layering on milk paint. So I've already got a sample of zinc in here. It's one part of the powdered milk paint to one part water. So I just think we have not used milk paint enough because I got so many questions when I put up the milk paint sale. Like, what's the difference? So milk paint is all natural, food safe, comes in powdered form. When it's not mixed up, it basically lasts indefinitely. Once it's mixed, you have a couple hours to use it. Um, and it's made to chip and crack. So if you're worried about that, then add bond or buy farmhouse finishes because um, <clears throat> farmhouse finishes has bond built in. I like to use just straight up milk paint because then I can add um, bond as I need. But we're going to we're going to get this gray on here. I don't know where I'm headed with this project. Actually, I just thought I'm going to layer some paint on. All right. So fabric. <clears throat> You want to be a little juicy with your stencil brush, not necessarily so juicy that it's just like 
not picking up the details and it's just mushing underneath, but enough that it'll absorb into the fabric. And I'm just going right over the top of this stripe. And then like Jamie said, we'll put the stripe in the middle. She's very smart. It's a good idea. I have a few ideas that are solid. I was over here trying to make this side one work and save That's some fabric. And, you know, I realized we can use all these little scraps for banners or the thousand other things we do with them. Yeah. <laughs> the, the thing is that we all have our skills, right? Like, and some, <laughs> you're good at problem solving, like construction skills. Yeah. And, oh, I was going to have you put weathered wood in that. Did you? I did. Oh, okay. I didn't should, put a ton, but no, enough. it should dry darker. And I yeah. actually think that that color is going to pair well with this. If we could just yeah. use milk paint to stencil, milk paint is typically um, thinner, so you got to be careful. But the thing about milk paint is it ain't coming out of the fabric. If you get DIY paint on you, you could probably get it off of your fabric. You get milk paint if on you, you hustle. If you hustle, it, it is going to attach itself for its ever loving life. If you have dry hands or dry feet, in my the case and you get milk paint on your feet it's going to be in the cracks of your feet forever like it it especially if it's a porous um like piece of fabric like this is really porous so the milk paint would get in there and it would never come off so you could use milk paint too and that is nice because you can get the little sample bags and with the 25 percent off it's a pretty good deal and um they make four ounces so not a ton so perfect for little projects like this so like if you wanted to do it inexpensively, you could just get like one sample of zinc and you could stencil with it and then also paint your product like your lamp base with it. But just like I said, it is thin. So you want to practice to make sure that you get it. So it's not like leaking under because you can't really yeah, mix fix up, that on mix up your. All right. Let's see if I went too juicy or if I got to cut more fabric. What is bond? It's just a, an additive. It's called extra bond. I'm happy <gasps> with that. Um, I'm happy with that. That looks good. I like it. I don't think we need the laurel wreath because the lampshade's not that big. The laurel wreath. The, oh, the yeah. I'm not doing stencil. the top. I'm just using this. I, I gave him our vine stencil because I didn't know if we needed extra detail. But I think that's going to be good. See if we can get the camera to focus up here for us. Oh, it looks good on camera. Oh, yeah. There we go. Hopefully it's not reading backwards for you. It probably is. I don't know. No, I think the it was reading backwards. I, no, me, it but. looked straight on on this. So yeah. what I see here is what they see there. Mm -hmm. That was fine. Okay, so you can dye. Can you dye fabric with milk paint? Um, probably if the fabric had open pores. So what? I've dyed fabric with DIY paint. So what I would do in that case is just do almost like a wash and work up to the color you want. Um, I wouldn't do full strength, like mix a milk paint in your water or whatever you're using I to would. dye. I just I put it in your water and just stick it in there because it's not going to be as bright as the paint. That's true. I've dyed with DIY paint for sure because DIY paint's really pigmented. I haven't tried it with milk paint, so I can't say for sure, but I don't know why it wouldn't work. Because there's like, like the paint comes, this is a sample of the zinc. It's basically pigments and um, additives in there to help it bond and make paint. And then you add the water. So this in and of itself is very like concentrated. All right. So what I'm doing here, not necessarily a have to do step, but I'm drying it out. And this is also going to heat set it. If this was DIY paint, it would help do that. But you don't want to burn your fabric. You don't want to burn the paint. I just want to get it dry and this is going to work perfectly it's never coming off after this for sure um well especially since there's a sealer in the paint in the cottage that's why i wanted to use cottage color because it's a built-in sealer so somebody asked what bond was again so bond is just an additive that you pour in your paint milk paint. we sell in your milk paint we sell it um on our website and it will make it not chip so like if this happens to chip, all chip off which i don't think it will but if it did then I would add the bond. And the reason why people love milk paint is because you get an authentically chippy look. When I get a second, I will bring over a corbel that we've done in milk paint um, because it does chip well. You can do a lot of things with like crackle and the clay paint and the cottage colors, but there is something to be said for milk paint and the authenticity of the finish you can get with it. It's just another arsenal in your faux finishing toolbox that you want to have. I always like to have it on hand. I don't, 
Honestly, I probably don't use it as often as the other paints. Um, but when I want that look, I'm glad that I have it. And, and sometimes I get crazy and use it all the time. I'm going to be honest. Most of the things that I paint for my personal house, like are milk paint. Like I, like these bar stools are milk paint. Um, the cabinet, although the cabinet in my bathroom is all chipping off. And so I'm just going to. The do humidity it. in there. We didn't seal it. Yeah. I'm going to just use and the cottage colors is. on that cabinet. <laughs> um, I have a frame, this milk paint, I have a cabinet. Um, and then like chairs and things, I will usually spray those with like cottage color. I'm trying to think what else I have, but yeah, it's pretty much all. I'm going a little big, so I have more room to work with. This was pretty tight on there. Renee said she finally fell asleep around 10. They were lighting off fireworks like till midnight. Oh, after midnight. We went and checked on the cow and it had been, it was like 1130 yeah. and it was still going like crazy. She didn't like it, but she has um, horses that are right next to her. Like it, their pins literally butt up to her pasture. And so she was over there hanging out by the horses. They were all together commiserating about the, the booming. I mean, that is one of the things that when you have animals in town there she are was fires. fine she didn't even stand up when she was laying down sleeping she didn't even stand up when i walked over to her and yeah. i gave her some scratches and told her it's going to be all right and she's like yeah i'm fine what are you doing <laughs> yeah aerial fireworks in utah are not illegal and so coming from arizona originally i was actually sitting with my friend Tanya, who I've known since I was a teenager, on my front lawn last night. And I was like, isn't it crazy that this is legal? Um, but Zeb is always really good. You yeah. didn't say it like that. I was lighting off some sweet aerials, and you're like, how is this even legal? Uh, that is true. That is how it went. <laughs> um, we had a big bucket of water. And then we have our, um, our hose ready. Zeb's super safe about it. We keep everybody back. And um, we always make sure to water our lawn. The day of fireworks, we had the lawn watered at the shop, like we were prepped and ready. But we've never, we've knock on wood, never had an issue. We had a ton of people over here. It was kind of exciting. We invited like all of our employees. Most everybody had plans except for Caitlin, um, who comes anyways because she's family. Caitlin and the boys came. And then we had um, my little boys have best friends that are brothers, and their whole family came over. So that was super fun. And then my friend Tanya and her husband. And her little boy came. Tanya has an older boy that would have come, except for Eliza was um, not here. So he opted to go hang out with his friends. I think that's going to work. Well, I would we'll give see. yourself a little extra. I actually already did oh, give good. myself a half inch extra okay. on this that overlap. I'm cutting. Yep. And then Odelia and Cooper were here too. They went somewhere else for barbecue, but then came back for the fireworks. And we get fireworks from this guy named Jay. He lives in Provo and I get like, fireworks are expensive. I'll give you that. But we get twice as many as we would get from like a local fireworks stand. So we had a pretty good display. Caitlin says she likes to watch them, but she doesn't like to light them. Understandable. I don't either. Not a fan. I just let the other people do it. <laughs> What are we working on, Allie Kath? We are working on, we just stenciled the lampshade with our horse grain sack. It's a JRV stencil. Um, so this is going to make it look like an old, like European grain sack. And we're using our grain sack fabric. And I am two-toning a lamp that Caitlin gave us. Caitlin, do you even know how long ago that was that you gave it, it to It's us? been within the last month. Maybe In two the last months. month. Uh, Maybe no. two months. I think it was like winter. I, I, I'm not sure, but I'm like 90% positive. If I, what I don't understand is if fireworks are illegal in Arizona, like where do people get them? Here, you just go to like the fireworks stands or like in my case, Jay's garage, but totally legal. I, and if they were illegal, I would not be doing them. No. Like follow all the laws. We follow the laws. Uh, Kayla says last summer, fall. What? No. Yeah, I told you it's been a hot minute. <laughs> where, where I'm really trying hard not to get any new free stuff for a while because I need to get through my own projects. Like all the stuff Sandy gave us is great because it was like thrift haul stuff and we just incorporated it. But I get 
you would be surprised. We get messages all the time of people wanting to give us free furniture. Um, and it's great. We totally appreciate it. But I have to be careful because I could be a hoarder in about 2.3 seconds. I'm like always two pieces of furniture away from hoarder status. And so I have to, I force myself to finish stuff so then I can get more pieces. Okay. So I just put the top of this on here. I just, I they just, said they have stands everywhere, even though they're illegal. That is crazy to me. Wow. You think they get shut down. Let's see if the hot glue holds. It's pretty fresh, so maybe not. Laws, laws don't work unless they're enforced. That's how that works. All right. If you heat gun your milk paint, you risk that it could all chip off. I really feel like because the finish on here was pretty matte, that I'm not at risk of it all chipping off, but I feel like I have to warn you that a heat gun is not your friend, especially if it was a shiny surface. All right. So that's pretty centered. Now I'm going to start rolling. I missed the top spots. of this. So I'm just going to fold this over, put a little glue here, like a, like a dot of glue. Maybe it's not pushing out. There we go. Vicky says, aren't we all craft hoarders? We are. I actually was digging through my, I have a cabinet, the cabinet that I take all my thrift tall photos on also holds like stencils, decoupage paper, IOD. So there's a lot in there. Um, and I'm going to go through it and you know, we do our, if you share on Facebook, we do giveaway winners and I actually have stuff I've never used like new product or like portions of transfers and things. I'm going to start pulling together stuff for our share winners. So that way we can have a variety of things we can send to people. This is actually really simple. I thought it was going to be harder than this, but I just clasped this end over here, brought it together. And now I'm just folding it over and gluing the, the edge of it and it's holding really well. And this is a high temp hot glue that we're using. High temp, the best the dollar store has to offer. Yeah, you know. That's, you're doing a good job. I'm like pretty impressed, but I gave you the hard job because I, I was not mentally prepared. I'll do the ruffle. I will let you do the ruffle because I've been told crafters. I, I over ruffle. Crafters are cult. True story. I would, so if you guys haven't watched Debbie Beard from Debbie's Design Diary, just put up a new video, and she talks. She lays down some very real like information about like hoarding stuff because she she does have, but her stuff is good. Like I, I could do a lot of fun with things with her stuff. Um, she's got good stuff. She's got good stuff. Back and she's here. got it all over the place. It's kind of fun to go and just see all her stuff. Yeah, I go there and I just start picking up crap and paint it. And well, it and she she usually is in the middle of a project when we pop by. And so we're like, hey, how can we help you? And she lets me do whatever I want with some of that junk. Yeah, it's kind of fun. And because she's like a different style than us, I feel like I can be really bold with my choices that I do there. And so sometimes it's epic fails. But in the video, she just posted like, 2 a.m. this morning. I woke up at 4 because Cody needed a drink and I couldn't sleep. Cody struggles with the fireworks. Yeah. So we he snuggled. Does on, not we do snuggled that. and watched Debbie's video about 4 o'clock this morning. And um, what was I going to say? I totally lost my train of thought. Oh, You're Debbie talking. put free stuff on the side of the road and she like filmed what she was putting out for free. And I was like, oh, that's all good stuff. I'm like, oh, Jamie, like, you have a problem. What are you doing? You're getting out of the way. I bet you did something with a foam head. I'm like, hey, I have a box of those. <laughs> Seems normal. All right. They said that it's looking really cool. Debbie, I would say that Debbie probably does not have more junk than us. She has more chippy painted junk, but I think that's because she paints it, doesn't finish it, and she it leaves sits it out outside there. in the California weather. Mm -hmm. But we have more space, so that's like I can't pass any judgment on her pile because she just doesn't have as much space as we do. We have like a barn and a garage, and like she lives in a studio apartment. I got things stuffed all over my house. People don't even know. Our house, including the basement, is like 3,900 square feet, and the basement down there is how many? Like four or 500? It's like 600. 600. It's, and it's, it's bigger than the cottage and it's full of it's basically food, food and camping stuff and, you know, all the, all the, th all the things that we don't have room for up here that we don't want to look at every day. Okay, We're yeah. going to use it a couple times a year, but we don't want to store it like where we... I mean, we do have lots of kids too. Yeah. 
If you take like humans per square footage, it's probably less. Well, Jack was like, Dad, for my birthday, I think I just want camping gear so I can go out to the property and just camp out there. I'm like, buddy, we, I got you. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> we don't need more camping gear. <laughs> so I'm just using a damp rag and pulling back to that base layer of cottage color. And that's why I used cottage color first because it's not water soluble the way milk paint is and DIY paint. So it will stop at that base color. Whereas if it was like DIY paint, then it would you would sand through it or, or wet distress through it, or you'd have to put like a layer of sealer. But because it has sealer built in, it's a very good candidate for a base color. Jack's at a Jack's at a really fun age. Redrick's he's getting he's a, he's almost twelve, but Jack is still young enough that like every tree on the property he's he's like sizing it up to see if he can put a tree forward in it. Um, <laughs> Redrick's more interested in like do we have more rock walls he can climb anywhere? Renee says she uses CBD for her dog. We do. We call it Puppy Pot but it's CBD and we give it to him with peanut butter. And that does help. Rex was chill. He was like, I don't know what you're like 10 o'clock at night. Fireworks are going off. Everybody went home. So I let him out to go to the bathroom and wet Rex went pee. Cody was like, no, nah, I'm good. He peed this morning at 4 a.m. when I let him out. Yeah. He was finally ready. Well, I had to take him out of the room because he kept jumping up on the bed. And usually if I'm on the bed, he knows, like, he's not coming up on the bed. Jamie, he'll go up there and snuggle her until I come back around. Um, but we don't let him on the bed. He's not allowed unless Jamie's the only one in there. And he knows if I'm in, like, laying in the bed, he will not come up there. But he was coming up there last night. And so I took him, I went and did some computer work, and he was literally, like, sitting on top of my feet while I was working on the computer, which is not normal. That's not, not what he normally does. All right, I'm getting this all aged and distressed here. I actually think it's doing pretty good. I'm going to heat gun this again. Okay, so this is where we're at. You can see I just kind of hot glued all around that lip. I was just putting the glue in the top and then folding it down. And I've got a few frays and things because this fabric wasn't hemmed. We just threw it on here. But I think that's going to be okay. Now I'm going to stretch it and I'm going to bring this seam together. I'm gonna stretch it down here and bring this I'd together start in tight. The middle. Yeah, well, right, right here. Yeah. So that, and I'm just gonna hot glue that too. That's gonna be cute. You wouldn't have to do the ruffle if you don't want to, but I think the ruffle is gonna really finish it off. You could also use like uh, what's gimp trim that you can get from like the fabric store. I like to just take my leftover grain sack fabric and make my own trim out of ruffles because it's leftover. I almost. It spend any more money i'm gonna i'm gonna trim this just a hair i got my pen line i should have used a pencil or something shame on sure shame on me all the way dry i'm not getting any crackle or chip so it's all right i got a, i mean i get a little bit of crackle if i did it more wet distressing and more heat getting i could possibly force it but i'm not in the mood for it to also possibly all chip off so i'm just gonna take what the milk paint is giving me today. Linda says my cat is deaf, so no longer noise. I wonder if the vibrations, if she would feel that though. Will yeah. the hot glue melt or soften when the lamp is lit? It doesn't get that hot. I've never had an issue with it. Cause that's, I, I, that's what they use. Like the glue that was on there, there was like a sash around the lampshade yeah, originally, a brown one, and they hot glued it on there. Especially if you use like LED bulbs, because they don't get that hot. Not they, like I mean, the they still do get hot, though. but not like the incandescents used to. Is that what we call? Is that what, Isn't they're, that what called? they're called? Right, I'm know. hoping that there's clear wax in here. It's feeling empty. So I'm using. We don't sell this wax brush. Our number twenty wax stencil brush. We have a limited quantity. I'm not sure, Caitlin. Do we even still have any more? And so we're working on developing a new stencil and wax brush. And so I've got to, This is the number one candidate right now. I've got to use this for a while to make sure I like it. I need to stencil with it, make sure it works for that. And if it does, then we will get it into development. We'll probably change the handle up and all those kinds of things. So if you want a number 20, I know we have like less than 20, maybe even less than 10 of them left. Thank you, Caitlin. She linked the fabric that Zeb's using. I know she's already linked 
the stencil, but it is the 1902 horse stencil. We were one of the first that I know of people to really come out with a full comprehensive line of grain sack stencils. And the reason why I developed them was because I love grain sacks but I can't always access the ones that I want for projects. And so being able to create your own is awesome. And if you wanted to like make it look older, you could tea dye the fabric or coffee dye it and make it look aged and decrepit. My fabric, even though I cut it larger, is still pretty tight. I think that other fabric that was on there was stretched over. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. So I've got my clear wax on here. It's kind of melty because I heat gunned this so it's nice and warm. And I'm I think just, I'm going to come I'm in. I'm just going it. about an inch at a time. Um, Diane, message me, or I think you have my number if you text me. I can send you the link to the one that we use. I think I get it on Amazon. That, if, if that's the Diane Johnson I'm thinking that I know of. If you're a different Diane Johnson, then you'll just have to DM me because you don't. I don't give out my number. <laughs> if it's my my friend Diane in real life, she has my phone number. All right. I need like a cloth to wipe my wax back. Do we have? Oh, I'll just have to use a paper towel. If you're not into like French country style, you could totally do this exact same thing, Bohemian. Like get a, one of our stencils and use bright colors of paint. Use bright layered drippy finishes on your, like really the sky's the limit with the technique. This is, this is difficult because there's like no backer to push against. I'm trying not to like fry my fingers. I'm just using dark wax on my lamp here to give it some more age. It's not really going to do much over the zinc, but it will age up the um, crockery. So it's going to be good. And it's going to sit down. There's like grain in the resin of the lamp. Let that cool off a little bit. I'm pulling it apart as I go. Because the glue is still too hot. It is the real Diane Johnson, sweetie. Uh, Nancy says, love your tenacity and persistence. When COVID hit, you really changed gears and made it work better than anyone I follow. Well, thank you, Nancy. I am very stubborn. So. Also, I, we really love being self-employed. Yeah, I want to continue to be self-employed. So I will get. Uh, I will get creative when necessary. Like we're, we're over eight years in together now, self-employed, which, you know, that's feels like a good long while. I worked at discount for 15 years total from like when I was 15 to 33. You or probably 17 worked to the same amount of hours in the last eight years though. Oh yeah, probably. <laughs> we're always doing new things. Like it's so fun that we are, we're going to be listing our very first property that our JRV properties company purchase last year we're going to get that land listed um thursday i think so once that gets listed i will share the link um in stories and in the group and everywhere i can so that way if you know anybody looking for land in utah if you've watched the jamie and zeb channel or follow it at all on facebook or youtube and it's just it's just called jamie and zeb um you've seen it already yeah you've seen the land but we're going to share the listing out once it gets up there and then we'll probably buy another piece of property that we might do some like excavation because we did a little bit of improvement on there we did some excavation and organization and tidying up it was a, kind of a hot mess all right so now i'm just going to pull this tight and that's going to stretch that over this wire frame know that I even needed to put clear wax on this. I could have just gone straight dark wax, I think. But we're getting it. Vicky says the land is a little too remote for her. It is off grid, which is what we we love. Yeah, it's it's our, and it, there are actually quite a few people that live in that subdivision. I feel like our new land 
even while it's closer, is more remote feeling because there's not people living. It's not that there couldn't be, but like the lots are all 40 plus acres. And so even if people do start developing their land, it's not going to feel the same. It's like a off-grid camping community is really what the other property is. There's people out there like so in case of emergency, you're not like completely alone. All right, I'm just wiping this dark wax off and this um, is done and ready for that lampshade and your combo of gray skies and weathered wood is actually going to pair really well with my zinc over the crockery because the crockery kind of mimics the grain sack fabric color and then the gray is going to be pulled into the lampshade so this is mostly gray with a little crockery and that's like a lot of crockery color with a little bit gray so it's a good balance i, I hope you're do you want to start making a ruffle yep i gotta wash my hands up because i use dark wax Oh, I need to wipe the topper there. But anyways, let's see if you guys, it's like a nice aged finish. Can you guys see that? It looks kind of dark on camera. It'll lighten up a little bit once the wax dries, but it looks good. Like I said, the existing finish was probably okay. Like I just like to, I like to mess with stuff. Are you going to work, Odelia? So, cause I and Maria are out for like, Two weeks because I is working Saturday. So Odelia and Eliza are going to be working with Ivy in the shop. And all I was going to say, if you guys ordered anything painted from last week's thrift haul, it probably won't ship out to like Monday because it's going to take, because yesterday was a holiday and Tuesday is normally my painting day. It's going to take me a little while to get through all those projects. So my goal is to have them done by Saturday so they can be shipped out next week. Okay, Caitlin says we have a very limited amount of number 20s, but she did include the link. So if you like our old big fat wax stencil brush with a chubby knob, the new one we're developing will not have that same handle. It will have a longer handle. So if you wanted that one, pick it up while you can. Hopefully you guys are getting a sense of what I'm doing. I'm just going under the lip here because I haven't really showed you. Oh, that came apart. Got to let my... I, I feel like I it's, it requires some patience, but it doesn't look too It's not hard. No, I'm just rolling it under. I So I cut about a half inch bigger on this. I took the lampshade off nice and neat without just tearing it apart and cutting it apart. I went down the seam that it had, and then I used this as a pattern, cut about a half inch bigger so that I had more room to roll just in case this fabric wasn't as stretchy as this. This actually looks less stretchy Love than the grain project. sack. And your shirt. Thanks. We actually just got these back in stock like a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. And I've been needing a new one. So I grabbed one from the store. I do know we have them still medium to XL, um, but our 2X, 3X and smalls are sold out. But if you want one and we don't have it, you can email Caitlin or just there's a little box you can click on the website to get an email when they're back in stock because IB will reorder. They just take this particular manufacturer somewhere in like Georgia, but they take a minute to get to us because they're popular. Okay, so ruffle next. I'm going to just move all this paint because when I'm working with fabric, I really like to be careful. Thanks, Caitlin. I think she just linked. My, and we also, the biker shorts, I don't know if Ivy put the new stock in, but I do know that we So let's go about an inch in. on the ruffle because I got, I got glue where I don't want it and I, it's like messing with the top right here. Okay. Just know that when you're gluing it, be careful where you glue it because because I glued to this like cross member wire right here, whatever you want to call that, the support where it sits on the actual lamp. I glued to that on accident and it's like stuck to it and it's making it, it's giving it a wrinkle. So if you're doing your project, be careful not to glue to those. I'm going to move this over. All right. So while I'm doing the ruffle, do you want to grab that white box? Do we have that here? I think we do that sold that yeah. stenciled. Yeah, I can. You can get that done while I do the ruffle. All right, where's your scrappies? Um, oh, here they are. I put it way over there. So that I had, hold on, I'm almost done gluing. You said an inch for the ruffle? No. Yeah, about an inch. Okay. We just, so look at, this is what I'm talking about. When we do the ruffle on the top, we need to cover how I like glued it here. It's oh, like puckered. Yeah. But I think if you cover that with the ruffle, no biggie. 
And then we need to... And my seam back here, that's just going to go at the back of the lamp like any seam would. It'll be fine. Let me show you. It'll be so fine this because is, once I do the ruffle, it's going to look rusty. This is this is my seam. You could have, you know what, if you would have given yourself more fabric, you could have folded it over and done it. Yeah, but, but it's like actually like a that. frayed edge. So it, yeah. it works with the design of the grain sack fabric. Look how good that's starting to look. I'm, I'm not... I'm not unhappy with our first attempt. This is the first time we've, we've stenciled and painted a lot of lampshades, but first time actually recovering it from scratch. Yeah, no, I think this works well. If you paint your lampshade, just know that if it doesn't have a good liner, like it could look interesting with the fabric shining through. I've painted many lampshades. Oh, also I wanted you to do that. So you didn't like at least an inch. So you don't see where I've got it doubled up because you'll see that on the backside. Okay. I'm just going to ruffle fabric when the lamp is on and then this is a little chunky on that end they said it looks super good are the black sheep shirts in men's sizes yeah this is a unisex xl you can see it's nice and baggy on me i could have gone with a large but in the summer i like baggy shirts for maximum airflow do you have a man in your life that may or may not be a little bit of a rebel no, I think that she probably just wanted to know for sizing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but maybe she has a black sheep of the family. Like, she got a brother that needs one. I don't know. All right. Okay. Happy with that. Let's see what it looks like on the lamp while she's doing the ruffles. And then I will go get your box and put some stencils on it. Perfect. All right. I haven't done a ruffle in a while. I hope I don't burn my fingers to death. This is, this is a little wide in a few spots. Like, how wide is an inch? I'm not very good at um, you're about an inch and a half, but let's go with it. Oh, well, you might be. Yeah. You're, you're a solid inch and a half on that. I'm just going to use this and just keep rolling it. So I get a better. All right. What do you guys think? Good makeover, not a good makeover. I'm personally loving it. Deb, you are opening yourself up to, but you know, if you, if you, if you don't like it, I'm not going to be offended. If you don't like it, you don't have to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> we, they're like, we have never forced. We're, anybody. we're here to give you ideas. You can do what you want with those ideas. As of yet, I have never forced anybody to purchase any of my stuff. No, you haven't. No coercion. Can you grab me that glue gun over there though? That I need that. How much will this cost? This is probably going to be somewhere in the 80, $90 range for this lamp depends on execution. So we'll see. Lamps uh, are big sellers for us. Like they do well. So I'm going to start my ruffle in the son of a. Did you put your hand in hot glue? No, I put my hand in wax. I just washed them. <laughs> Don't touch that. No touchy the wax. And when I'm done with a ruffle, I will come trim it. Yeah, you could use it the way that it is. Like, you don't need a ruffle. Not necessary, but I like it. So I'm going to do it. I'm just checking for... I still think that's too thick. Okay, let's do it. It's too thick on that side. Where are my scissors? Like I said, if you don't like the ruffle, you could definitely use um, gimp trim, it's just like the trim that you could, oops, you can pick up from the fabric store. So I'll, I'm going to show you this in a minute, but it's kind of tricky to do and get straight and talk and be live on camera. But I'm just putting a bead of hot glue and then pinching it like a pie crust. So I'm just pinching this edge to give it a ruffle and I'm bringing it over the edge of the lamp and I will trim any long pieces that come.
I'm if you're doing this, this and you're like, okay, that's not quite straight. I don't like that. I have used the heat gun to like heat up the hot glue and fix it. So don't, don't worry if it's not perfect. You can come back. Oh, I started out juicy like I was doing fabric. Oh, well, I'm, hopefully. I'm going to distress it. You have to be careful. I with mean, I am going to distress it, but sometimes you can't fix it with distressing if it's too crazy. Oh my gosh. This is not a good morning for me to ruffle. All right, it's getting there. <clears throat> Did you show them with your pinchy fingers? Yeah. I'm going to focus. I'll let you do the chatting. Oh. Well, I can't see the chat from where I'm at, but I'm I'm really excited. This is like a side project. This one is from a Saturday thrift haul a week ago. Yeah, we sprayed it, but it needed stenciled, and then it sold over the weekend. Yeah, it wasn't sold in the live stream, but it sold before the, they, they haven't even seen what it's going to look like painted. They bought it. That happens with a lot of our stuff because we're we're fairly consistent with what our finishes are every now and then i'll go wild and do some paint blending in the sun that i don't the video from a week ago like where the weekend i was i was gonna do a much more like feathered neat paint blend but it was so hot outside my paint was drying too fast uh, and it just wasn't working with me. So keep that in mind if you're doing paint blending. Like I was going to make it like this beautiful, like soft transition. And it just wasn't working. And I didn't have, like we had to be somewhere at 4.30 <laughs> that, that afternoon. So I didn't have all afternoon to get it done. And we needed to get the video out. Um, prime and prime cool. example of not putting your best foot forward in in a real application, if I was finishing that just regular and not for a video, I probably would have just put it back in the barn and revisited it. <laughs> I think it still looks pretty cute. I, I think that if I were going to do the blending, I would have done panel blending and I would have just did a light color in the panel and then fettered it around the edges. But where'd you run off to with the heat gun? Oh, it's back here. Oh, thank you. Angela says, I'm not usually a ruffle person, but I always just love how Jamie does this type of ruffle. It is a uh, the Jamie Ray special because I am not a seamstress. <laughs> so like doing a loose, I know you can do a ruffle by also doing like a loose stitch and then pulling it. But the hot glue is how I have to attach it anyways. So it looks pretty good. All right. So we're missing the horse's feet on this, but... I feel like it's going to work fine. I will distress this. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, let's do the other side too. Or do you want to do like the vine on the other side? No, I'm going to just do this on both sides. Okay. I might do. So this is painted with cottage color and white linen and we just sprayed it. We're going to, we're going to actually go through the thrift haul from last week and pick out things that can be sprayed. So there may be some things that ship sooner if I can spray the finish, but not everything blends itself to that or needs like extra stuff so we we spray then we layer stuff on i was thinking about filming it and making it friday's video because i have to do it anyways so instead of furniture just doing a bunch of thrift flips and she's on her own because we 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 stripped the roof i'm like i have 10 days in the forecast zero clouds zero rain it's rained twice <laughs> since I pulled the shingles off the roof and they weren't in grace. They were not in good condition, but they were still offering a pretty high level of protection on 90% of the roof. There's a couple holes that were real bad where the woods rotted underneath. And you may help me a little bit leak. because sometimes you buy stuff that I would not buy. And I disclose when you buy it, like I'm not paying that. <laughs> I'm like, you, I, you're a grown man. You can buy what, you can thrift whatever you want. But some of those stuff, I'm like, there is there is one frame in particular. I have no idea. Oh, like, that one? Good yeah. Good luck. Honestly, Buttercup. when I thrifted it, I thought that that was just like something pressed up against the glass, but it's actually painted on the glass. I don't think anybody's bought it. So feel free to redonate it should you not want to. Yeah, I might it. just take that Jamie off. ain't paying that. Just might take that off the website. Right. It was $1.50. I think I can absorb that loss. 
Well, now maybe what I will do $2. is fray this a little bit more along the edge just with my finger. And then if I need to trim it to level it out, I can do that off camera when I'm not like on live TV. So I, are you sure I need to put a ruffle on the top of that? Cause I actually kind of just love it on the bottom. I think the top, the bottom was messier than the top. I can just take your little thingy bobber and I don't think that needs to go inside. Like it doesn't to. look dirty and it's like pretty, it's yeah. sprayed kind of like everything else. I might put, there. I might do an extra bead. Would that not work? Would that show on the other side? If I just use a little more glue just to make sure. No, it's not coming off. What I do you guys not. think? I just think just on the bottom. I think if I put it I on the top, I was just worried about that wrinkle on the top what or wrinkle? maybe go, maybe go smaller. Can you do like a half inch? I could do a little ruffle. What do you guys Can think? Can you do like a half Just inch Just the bottom ruffle looks there? good. So where's the pucker that's bothering you? Because this is not This one right me. here. Okay, let's see if we can fix that with a heat gun. Well, that would be awesome. Here, heat gun this real quick. All right. Oops. <laughs> and I still I still need to finish the ruffle in the back. I'll do that off camera. It just needs a little more fabric. That should be good. I just need, need it dry enough so I can set it down on this side in distress. All right. Everybody's saying just the bottom. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to carefully. Don't burn my fabric. Heat gun this up. Heat that glue up. Let's see if we can smooth out the pucker that is causing distress. See what I'm talking about, though? It's not bad. I don't. I don't okay. know why. All right. Just just walk away then. Just, just I, walk away. I think away. it's fine. Okay. Stencil. Imperfection is part of the human element. It's how they know it was handmade. I do. I am going to do an extra little bit of glue around all these elements. So yeah, I think that's it. So off camera, I'm going to trim it a little bit just to level it up. And I'm going to add more ruffle. But I think it looks good. I'm, I'm happy with that. Cheryl says the ruffle made it. Thank you. I think so too. I love... A little rustic ruffle never hurt nobody. I'm gonna get these in water, and then we'll show you Zeb's. Oh, here, can you box? You put and my I'll stencil clear brush. Wax it. What? You put my stencil brush in water too. Yeah, we will just clear wax it, and or does it have enough uh, cottage color? Yeah, this is all wax. cottage color. It doesn't need wax. Yum. Two projects finished. I love checking stuff off my list. Are you gonna finish that ruffle though? Yeah, I am. <laughs> but not on, like, they don't need to watch that. All right. They get the point. I love this custom little finial. Yeah, it ended up being all right. I was worried I wasn't going to be able to turn it, but we got it, got it going. It, it went right into the chuck for the lathe and done. So this has a really cool navy color that was like yeah, a it was bad navy paint already job, but... Kind of it was, it was like a weird paint job. It was like splotchy. Like it now it looks like painted. an old tote. Okay. Done and done and done. And I used that same stencil, so now I don't have to like stress about washing a bunch of stencils. Yeah, batch doing it. All right, I don't know who bought this tote, but it's finished and getting put in the shipping room to get sent out. All right, guys, if you need these paint products, um, DIY videos, we are here for you. Go to JanuaryVintage.com. That website not only has all the things that we sell, but there's also a blog on there. Caitlin does a lot of our projects. There's links to all of our social media and all of our contact information. So if you need help, we can help you. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to January Vintage for more. Yeah, why? All right, guys, have a great Wednesday, and we'll have a new video up Friday, so be watching for that. Catch you guys later. You got to you gotta end oh, it. Oh, I was, I was going <laughs> to unplug the thing like that. You're going to plug the computer? Oh, my It's goodness. got a battery. It'll last for about five hours.